David, your career has focused on developing a certain kind of general practice, um, which I think sometimes you talk about as pastoral care. Could you characterise the, the essence of that pastoral care um, approach and explain maybe why that eventually came into conflict with the regime of regulations that's emerged in the UK over the last few years? Yes. Well, pastoral health care is about how do we engage in a helpful way with people who come to us in ways that cannot be fixed quickly by technology. Now, what that means is that we have to understand the person and communicate with them, engage with them in ways that are not manipulative or instructive or intrusive. It is about comfort, it is about um, containment, it is about guidance, all the time with a growing understanding of what that other person is. Um, there was a physician a hundred years ago called William Osler, he was very famous uh, as the father of modern medicine in a way, and he said, it is as important to know what kind of person has an illness as what kind of illness that person has. And that is a pretty good um, summary, really, of what pastoral health care is about. So it is about the uniqueness of the person as much as it is about the generic, the communal nature of their illness. Yes. So in other words, if somebody gets flu, yes, we know it's the influenza virus, or we think we know, but how does that impact on their life? How is that going to affect them and their relationships at this stage in their life? And how then do those considerations change how I talk to them and what indeed I do with them? Now, those things cannot be procedural. They're difficult to measure. They cannot be standardized and measured. And we are now living in a world where inspection and management are increasingly defined by management, standardization, um, and measurement. So those aspects of pastoral health care that I'm talking about more and more lie outside of that management model. Um, and I think that increasingly our regime does not understand those things, doesn't recognize them and doesn't understand them. And I think that that is why I got taken out really because I would not did not comply with all the incre increasingly unviable, unworkable procedures and was concentrating on the other things. But I do not believe I was ever hazardous in that emphasis. That's where I differ from the Care Quality Commission's um, conclusions. If you read their report, as I say, they make me sound as if I was reckless, feckless, incompetent and uncaring about those matters. And yet there is no evidence that that was the case. You cannot survive uh, or even thrive for 40 years in practice as I did and never have a formal complaint and have exceptionally good patient feedback if you are any of those things, you will be found out probably within the first couple of months. So there wasn't any corroborating evidence. But it was because the inspection regime had become, and is always in danger of becoming, a sealed system, a hermetic system that considers only its own evidence by its own rules. That's the problem.